Hey, it's the Halloween edition of FR Racing's Garage Talk. I'm writer, I mean, DJ Fluck. I am Gabe Lamus. No, um, Eric Mike. Richardson. That's right. That's right. So my kids are at the age where they are picking Halloween costumes out for me, and they're going to be members of the Paw Patrol. So I am writer from the Paw Patrol. So I've got my my vest on here, and I'll be walking around in their costumes. Actually, we had to go out to the store tonight, and um, and they were in their costumes, and people were kind of laughing and like not like oh you, wow you're taking your kids out on Halloween. There were other people out. Like it's close enough to the holiday. It's uh, almost weekend tomorrow. And, and I texted it's you this. we we're, we're st- I was standing outside the store that we were at, and all of a sudden, I mean, you know, I'm trying to keep the kids corralled. They're running around. They're, you know, full of energy. And all of a sudden, just somebody on the sidewalk comes walking by me, wearing a t-shirt uh, or a sweatshirt from the high school that Eric and I graduated from. Which I live in Arizona. I live outside of Phoenix, Arizona. My high school that I graduated from is 1,500 miles away. And I'm just, I like, I, I was stunned with what I saw while I'm trying to corral my kids. And and by the time, like, I, I'm like, did I? No, there's no way. And I, I looked at the spelling of it. And I'm like, it is. that. that is, that's right. We're that's, one of the few that spells wildcats with a K. The, with a K. And, you know, it's it was the big red K with the cat, you know, sticking his head through it. And I was like, Wow. That was the last thing I expected to see today, but you know, here we go. I wish I would have been like, "What's you know, what's the deal with that?" Because the kid looked like you know, she was like maybe at most fourteen, maybe fifteen years old. It'd be funny um, if it was actually somebody that we know, um, their kid. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't come from that big of a town, but I, I did not recognize those people at at first glance, but. Yeah, that was that was uh, a little surreal to see. I thought I escaped that place. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, uh, here's the funny part: when I go back home, knock on wood, I have actually yet to see somebody at like a store or anywhere that we went to school with, or anybody I, else that I know. The last time, well, it's it's been five and a half years since I've been to my hometown it was for my brother's wedding, and so like. You know, we saw people that we've known for years at my brother's wedding. But other than that, like, I mean, I, you know, we would, before we moved to Arizona, we'd go out for like Christmas or uh, Thanksgiving or something like that. Or, you know, make it's just, you know, we're three hours away. We'd pop in every, every once in a while. But since, yeah, uh, got that, that 1500 mile buffer, it's like, eh, I don't feel like going back. Yeah, I can't just run home on the weekend anymore. No, not not at all. So, yeah, I'm I'm here. Um, I feel like somebody we graduated with moved here too, but I I I don't know. Couldn't even begin to tell you. I I yeah, there's <clears throat> I, I've lost count of or uh, you know there's there's only a handful of people that I still have like regular communication with from high school and you know present company included. <laughs> Oh, on that note, um, just some quick housekeeping. Posted a review of my my wheel stand back here, my Extreme Sim Racing uh, SXT V2, the, the Nardo Gray Edition. I posted the full review at frracingonline.com, so be sure to check that out. Uh, very, very, speak very highly of it. Minor, minor little issues, nothing horrible, nothing that would deter me from from buying it again if I was in the market, but it's 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 an awesome unit. Yeah, hopefully at some point I can start building up a actual rig, get away from the um clip clip old into the desk. desk and kitchen chair. Uh yeah, I've I've got it figured out where I'm gonna do my setup. I'm just gonna expand on this and put the the racing wheel X, they call it, and put the monitor stand on the back of this thing. And you know, I'll, I'm gonna run it next to this desk, but the next question is what do I do with this giant bookshelf full of books? So that that'll be a bigger discussion for another time on that uh, note could always go the route of palmer and colton what's that the uh ap european history book from high school <laughs> that's a story for another time <laughs> and while i don't remember the exact details of that story i have a feeling it has something to do with your backyard and a fire pit Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> as do most of our stories. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So, er Eric, you mentioned you didn't watch a single lap of anything this weekend and uh, had a busy weekend and uh, didn't get Yeah, it was pretty busy. Didn't get a chance. I was out about running errands, doing some other things. So, yeah, I did not see a single lap of anything. The, this weekend was the few times a year where the uh, Formula One overlaps directly with NASCAR because they're here in the States. They're at Coda and Austin, Texas for the U.S. Grand Prix. Um, interesting weekend. My, my favorite is everyone making fun of Apple CEO Tim Cook uh, with his... We'll say less than enthusiastic waving of the checkered flag. <laughs> Did you see that clip? Did I send that to you? No, I have not seen it. <laughs> when I have, so, when I say I have so, not seen it, like anything. So, so Tim Cook, is pretty much nothing. Yeah, the CEO of Apple. They cut to him. They didn't put like a nameplate or anything. And I'm just thinking, like, wow, that flag guy looks like Tim Cook. And uh, they catch it. And, you know, this is Coda. The flag stand is, you know, right at track level. It's not like, you know, most tracks in the world or in, at least, you know, we're used to in NASCAR and IndyCar where the flag stands up high. This thing's at track level. And you just have Tim Cook just very slowly and meticulously, like, figure eight with the checkered flag and just has this, like, very serious look on his face and just he didn't Where, drop it, did he? <laughs> he did not drop it. He was very, like, he was very, he took it very, very seriously. And, er, you know, just social media was just making fun of him to no end. And it was like ESPN Motorsports, which I think it's like a European or UK account, put the, the video of Tim Cook up and said, Hey, Tim Cook, calm down, or <laughs> something to that extent. And, uh, yeah, you know, there were people that were defending him, saying that like he was, you know, honored that he was trying to hold back the emotion of being the one waving the checkered flag. And you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't, you know, I don't know if he's a considers himself a Formula One fan or not. But it was, it was the 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 joke. Yeah, hey, I have it pulled up right now. Yeah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> he's just just very slowly, methodically. It's like a figure eight. Just oh man. <laughs> You know, if I and you know, I can say this now because I've never done this, but if I was ever given the opportunity to wave the green flag or the checkered flag at any race, and I don't care if it's at the local dirt track or at the county fair or the Indy 500 or the Daytona 500, you get me up in that flag stand with the, that green flag, you see those cars coming, one, the adrenaline's going to kick in. And that's going to be the most aggressive waving of a green flag that I've you know, of a flag that I will have ever done in my life. I can tell you that right now. Uh, adrenaline's going to kick in. The crowd noise is going to kick in. It, it's almost kind of like those referees in the NFL that you can tell, like, when they're making a call that if it's going to benefit the home team and there's going to be a big roar in the crowd that you can, you can see that those referees get, like, kind of into it to kind of work the crowd a little bit. And like, holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, you know, repeat fourth down, you know, whatever. <laughs> Just get the crowd now, pumped. This isn't me saying these. I searched Tim Cook checkered flag on YouTube. Here's the results Tim Cook does the worst checkered flag <laughs> in the history of Formula One, USGP 2022. Next one Tim Cook waving checkered flag like a dead fish. <laughs> then Tim Cook does the worst checkered flag waving in the history of Formula One. <laughs> Apple CEO Tim Cook embarrasses Formula One fans. <laughs> then um, Apple CEO Tim Cook is the WOT flag waver. <laughs> I would assume worst of all time. Yeah. And then worst checkered flag waver ever, Tim Cook. <laughs> I, one, of, one of them that uh, a tweet that went viral said, hey, Tim, you're waving a checkered flag, not surrendering in war. <laughs> but so yes. check it out youtube <laughs> yes, not my I, voice I, I i i didn't expect we we'd be discussing the waving of a checkered flag of any race ever but here we are 
Um, and what what else do you get when Max Verstappen wins again? Um, has a has a near to... twelve second pit stop with you know like 15, 10, 15 laps to go. Still manages to catch Lewis Hamilton. Still wins by almost six seconds and allows to keep his lap while Guan Yu gets his lap invalidated for basically the same infraction. And Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso get into each other. Alonso keeps driving. He's released onto the track and then is penalized 10. He finishes seventh, penalized 10 spots uh, for driving an unsafe car. Um, Sebastian Vettel had his, this, this video is on, on social media. He was, about point, I think it was 0.9 seconds behind Kevin Magnuson on the final lap, caught him on turn 19, I believe it was. Uh, and he almost lost it too at one point and managed to save it and still still work his way past, past Magnuson. Um, and, and then, then after what, he crossed, George Russell runs in the signs. George, yeah, George Russell takes out Carlos Sainz on the first turn of the first lap, uh, given a five second penalty. Signs punctures a tire, ends up having to retire from the race. Um, let's see what else happened. Oh, Seb led a lap or a couple laps. That was uh, that was not expected. Yeah, he led a couple laps, then had like a a ten or eleven second pit stop himself. I didn't see what happened there, but Verstappen, it was something with the gun wouldn't turn when they were trying to put a tire on and they end up, I think they end up having to get a new gun to, to tighten his tire. And he was really upset after they, they left and, you know, the, you know, whoever he was talking to on the radio and I still don't, I can't tell the difference. Sometimes they just basically said head down and go. And sure enough, he did. Or not having watched a lap of the race. I think the checkered flag is probably the best storyline because everything else seems to be on par with, every other race this year yeah pretty much so it didn't miss much no 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 hey at least it didn't rain it did not rain it was very windy though very very windy uh and i was causing some problems for some drivers they were frequently complaining um towards the end of the race yeah it shows you like you know lewis lewis hamilton and the experienced vet he is he kept coming on the radio, pointing out every time Verstappen left the track. And, you know, he was just doing that. That was some some serious gamemanship to, uh, you know, make race control aware of it. And and Max used up his warnings and they basically said next time, you know, it was next time. I think it was a five second penalty. And he's like, he did it again. He did it again. And then, you know, here Max's radio. You used up all your strikes, Max. Stay on the track. <laughs> But anyway, um, NASCAR, Kyle Larson dominated. I only caught the last bit of it. Uh, I yeah, you know, it's Homestead, Martinsville this week, Phoenix next week. Got my tickets. Uh, Going to go to the ARCA race on Friday, the fourth. So looking forward to that. Yeah, it'll be fun to see. I'm hopefully going to get to the Michigan race next year i have not been to an arca race before i mean honestly before this year i may have watched like one or two arca races ever it's so hard to find them they're they're usually tape delayed which is kind of weird nowadays that they're tape delaying races but sometimes they have them at really odd times like this race starts at 11 30 on a friday morning uh local time yeah, just a little bit different. Yeah, so I mean, it's a busy day on the track. You look at the the Friday schedule at Phoenix Raceway for Championship Weekend. The gates open at like ten. The ARCA introductions are at eleven. The race is at like it's like from eleven thirty to one basically. Then the trucks come out and practice a little bit. Then the Xfinity practices a little bit. Then the Cup practices a little bit. Then you have cup, uh, truck qualifying. And then there's like a concert mixed in there, a couple concerts mixed in there. And then you've got the truck race at seven o'clock. So it is going to be a busy, busy day at Phoenix Raceway. And I 
you know, the, the tickets are pretty, they're not sold out by any means, not even close to sold out, but you know, how, how many people are going to come like us with the young kids? Cause sticking around for a seven o'clock green, you know, Ray start is not, not going to work, but you know, who's going to come for the Arca race. Who's going to come for the truck race at seven. Who's going to come and stay all day. Uh, you know, that's a lot of racing. That's, that's a lot of stuff going on. You, you know, we'll, I mean, it's, it's entirely possible if the kids hold up, we'll be able to see an Arca race truck practice. Xfinity practice and cup practice all in one afternoon. It'd be so. pretty fun. And speaking of Larson's dominance, um, what 199 out of 267 laps. Wow. Yeah. No, I, I thought it was pretty lopsided. He kind of fell back after a pit stop, I believe, but managed to work his way up. I've been mean, going through and watching some of the old clips uh, from previous years, and they had the clip of Kenseth taking out Logano. Run, Didn't Kyle it? Larson win the year that we went to the November race? No, Logano actually won that year. Uh, Larson right. was L- L- Larson was still driving for Ganassi back then. Yeah, he's in what, the forty-two target. He was car. in he was in the forty-two target car, and he will for from for my memory, he will be most be remembered for losing it coming out of the old turn four at Phoenix Raceway on lap one. Yep, and right in front of us. Right in front of us, and then they had to restart. I have video of that. I do too. I I, I have video of him spinning out and uh, restarted. And generally, the race. I mean, there was a couple of cautions, but there wasn't anything crazy that day. It was a pretty quick race. So, oh, the one thing I did see from the race, um, Larson getting into the back of Truex and going into his pit backwards. Oops. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. Yep. Yeah, and he uh, gave him a nice spin in pit lane. Mm-hmm. I've been at it pretty much since playoff started. I find it hilarious that Kyle Larson won the race and is not in the playoffs at the time. Yeah, because so that's another be, trend. Be, because Rick Hendrick successfully appealed William Byron's penalty to put him back into the top four going into Coda, which then caused Larson had a problem, which caused him to drop out of the top or the, or the top or top eight. And then fell out of the top eight after he had his late race problems and missed out. Oops. NASCAR, do better. Do, Let's do just think, keep them all in. Do you think Rick Hendrick regrets his decision to appeal the, the Byron penalty? I mean, you, you know, you have to, but... He's still right there on the edge. Um, Might still get two drivers into the Final Four. Yeah, probably. Byron does well, and I think Elliott's probably still what, at the top. He's close to the top. I mean, the only one locked in so far is Logano. Uh, let's see. Chastain, Elliot, Byron are locked in. Are they? I, I didn't know. Um, Chastain is 19 points above the cut line. Yeah. Chase Elliott is 11, and Will Byron is 5. Hamlin, Blaney, Bell, and Briscoe are below. So who does that put in? I haven't even been following. Yeah, so I still want Ryan Blaney to win, not having won a race this year. I, that I think would that would be, be hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. That and it would here. be fitting to the season. I mean, he let's see, right here it says he has 15 top tens, 10 top fives. Oh, Logano, he's um Locked in already. Yeah, yeah. Logano's in. You know, short of Chastain, like finishing dead last, he should be good. You know, <laughs> can you imagine Ross Chastain competing for a championship going into Phoenix. <laughs> I think it'd be awesome to get Denny Hamlin in. Hamlin and Chastain oh, going into the final man. turn. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen there. That's what NASCAR wants. They they want to see that that rivalry on the last day. Oh, I that, can only imagine the marketing PR uh, taking this off. All that, off season going into Daytona, actually the Coliseum for the oh, Clash. Man. So the uh, the other thing this week is they were talking to Kyle Busch about. Um, 
you know, having a new new sponsor next year. And he, I, yeah, I don't know if he said he doesn't know or if, you know, or if he's just saying that because, but some, some reporter asked him a question of like, you know, you as, with your M&M sponsorship over the years, M&M's was pretty lax about your antics and things you said and things you did on track. And he, he had some comments that he made over the years that got him sent to uh, some sensitivity training and numerous, you know, numerous fines and fights and everything. And, and he basically said like, um, you know, do you think a new sponsor is going to have to make you change your ways out there? And he's like, well, I don't know. We're going to have to be 8% different, 18% different, 25% different. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> just, he just could see his look on his face. is like, well, that was kind of a dumb question. But... Kyle Bush. Either love him or you hate him. There is no in-between. There is no in-between. It's hilarious, though, with my wife. Like, she knows doesn't know much about nascar but she does know she does not like kyle bush <laughs> and we were watching that road to the you know the playoffs or whatever the, the usa special show which i'm a couple episodes behind on that now but they followed kyle bush around and she's like oh my god that guy is so full of himself <laughs> very much so uh anyway um wednesday night dash Iowa. Yeah, we um actually big race last night <laughs> or um well Wednesday night. I don't even know what day it is anymore. These yeah. old days all run together for me. Yeah, it's it was Wednesday. We're recording this on a Thursday. We're airing it on Friday, and I'm having an identity crisis because yes, I am. For those who missed the start, I am in the Paw Patrol for Halloween because my kids made me. Um. Yeah. So. Well, that that sucked. I uh, I was, I I was just, I don't know. I just the short track racing, and it's just it's something I'm just not like I I'm bad at pretty much everything, but I'm worse at the short tracks. And you know, I I you were running. There was nine of us in the race last night. You ran eighth most of the night. I was it dead took last. Me Fifty laps to figure out yeah. how to run. Right, and that I was in the same boat. <clears throat> like, and you were three, four tenths faster than me every single lap in the first half. Uh, I made the mistake of turn one, going over that bump and sliding up the track probably twenty times out of the eighty laps. And now I here's the laps. funny part: I was running faster than you going in. I thought I was gonna be okay. I had decent lap times. I fell, I think, almost 10 seconds behind seventh place. You did. Yeah. And, yeah. And I'm looking at it. I'm getting to the competition caution. I'm looking at at it. Caden was leading in the first half. I'm just watching on the the, the times, and I'm just like, am I going to hold him off? I'm going to hold him off. And I, you know, I did my classic get lapped a lap before the caution, which is fine, because then I... You know, I took the lucky dog. I got back on the lead lap and I enter the second half of the race with a fresh set of tires. And I'm right there on the, on the back of the group again. And I fell behind again, but not as far. I think it's about five or 10 laps into that run. I finally, I made an adjustment that worked. And then I was, was it- hanging on to Colton there for a while. I got it inside a couple of times, but I didn't want to slide up the track and, takes it out so it's fell back in line did, did you hear tyler's comment about oh so tyler clinched the championship last night with his yeah, win. congrats tyler so congratulations to, to tyler vickery um i mean he's been running strong all year he missed last week uh he was late getting home and missed missed joining the session he could have but, had what two more wins on the season if not for a matter of like literally two tenths of a second fractions of a second yeah fractions of fractions of a second but <laughs> He made a comment on the, I want I can't remember which half of the race it was, but he said when he went in to change his tires, he looked at the percentage left, you know, his tire wear. He said he was down to first half. Yeah, he was down to like thirty five percent left on his tires going into the pits. And like I, you know, I was bad. I I think I got into the fifties, but I don't. I'm like I, did I not. didn't even look. I couldn't tell you. I I'm just like man, no. But yeah, second half of the race, I 
brushed the wall a couple of times. I fell behind, but I stayed on the lead lap. And I'm just like, man, I just, you know, you, you keep the car somewhat clean, run somewhat consistent, and you never know what's going to happen. And sure enough, with what, three laps to go? Three or four to go. Three or four to go, the middle pack took each other out. <laughs> four four I, cars. And, I somehow snuck through that. And you snuck through it. And then here I come a few seconds later, just cruise right through, get past those four cars. Uh, one of them ended up surviving. It was actually Justin Neves ended up surviving uh, and and staying out and, and finishing uh, a lap down. But he, he stayed out. The rest of them had to tow back to the pits. Actually, I think Colton managed to to get back out there, but uh, yeah, maybe got out. He was upside down at one he, point. He was upside down at one point. Yes. And uh, it's we'll have to use that crash. For the, I think we'll, that'll be our crash of the week this week. I, I don't like putting our drivers out there as, you know, in our league as crash of the week, but sometimes it's just, you know, it, it, it creates such good engagement on our Instagram account and it, you know, and ultimately it brings more people in to watch the league. So, you know, it, <laughs> we're going to do it. I think, um, hey, you know, what? I got to point out to the crashes that we end up dealing with this season with the ARCA cars, it's not been for lack of talent. No, we've had some really hard racing. And if you watch, yeah. especially that first half, there were, I think six or seven cars that were what within a couple of seconds of each other. And it's been fairly common to have us bunched well, up a lot. But well, we look at the roster of our drivers too, where you have, from day one, you know, you have me, you have you. Every so often, my brother will show up. I mean, every so often, he will show up. Uh, Mark Vickers has been there since the beginning. Justin Neves has been there since the beginning. Uh, Eric Bloom's been there since the beginning. Um, Justin Wexberg took the middle part of the summer off, but he's, he was there at the beginning. He was actually our first outside driver to come in and join us. So you've got seven drivers here that have essentially been racing together since the beginning of March. You know, Caden and Colton came in. Um, yeah, Colton you know, came in, Colton. last race there. Yeah, we, we invited him into our last cup race in uh, May. And he had a run him. for his money. Yeah, he did. Absolutely. Almost stopped the clean sweep. He was about three seconds off. And, you know, outside of the super speedways, uh, nobody could touch him the rest of the, the time. Um but you know, Hunter came in in the in the truck season. Yeah, we've been racing together for months. Like this this core group that we have put together of of drivers. You know, we we know stuff's gonna happen. Um, you know, and I, I can't can't forget. You know, like Brandon Birmingham's been with us now uh, for this is his second season in the league. And I'm going to be really upset if I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, and getting Tyler and Scott jumping. Yeah, in Tyler and Scott joined us this season. It's been awesome. Yeah, I think I covered it. I'm not forgetting anybody, am I? Um, We got Crow, who's run with us for a while. Yeah, yeah, he he kind of disappeared. I don't know what happened to him. Um, Yeah, that's that's everybody. But, I mean, we've got a really good core group of guys all – roughly around the same skill level. I mean, you know, Tyler has been, you know, on that high end where I've been on the the yes. low end, but I mean, <laughs> it, it's not like, you know, you've got some 4,000 I rating driver coming out here, kicking everybody's butt every week. Uh, you know, it's been competitive. We've had probably what five really good finishes, four really good finishes this season. I think but maybe North Wilkesboro and this one have been the biggest. Yeah. Mid Ohio was a big gap at the end, but it was right. a it was, battle it was for good. a long time. Um, Talbot was our closest at that point. Three. Yeah, McCar Scott McCarris over Tyler by fractions of a second at Kansas. Uh, it was a close one. Uh, what else? I mean, I'm gonna pull up. I should have had this pulled up. It's just we've had the, a lot of great finishes. It's we've, been a we've very had, fun season. We've had yes. And the thing is, like, you know, the, we know wrecks happen. Nobody's out there intentionally causing trouble. 
um, you know, we just put together a group of 15 really good guys. Uh, oh, you know, Bernard's run with us too. Yeah, Bernard, of course, you know, Bernard Pollard had to, to drop out in the fall, but he's, he's raced with us when he's, he's been in town. Um, let's see, let's, let's go through this here. So Chicago, I know Caden won that one. Tyler finished second. He was about four seconds back. So that wasn't, you know, that wasn't a close one. And overall, it was pretty competitive. A lot of passing. A lot of close runs. I actually finished the Chicago race on the lead lap, too. That was... Yeah, my, my standards are a little lower. Lead lap, yeah. Uh, Kansas. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. The de- the different Scott McCarris won at Kansas point zero nine nine seconds with Tyler in second. Um, we know Mid Ohio, we know Talladega, Michigan, Colton. Race. Yeah, Colton won. Hunter was two point three three six seconds back. Justin Knees was three point four three four. Mark in fourth. So I mean, it's just. We're not having, you know, we're having a really close finishes and, and, you know, just good racing and the, the competition caution has worked out perfectly in my opinion. Um, you know, it, it's just, you know, we've been, we, we've been adapting the rules and adapting as we go. We're not, you know, committed to like, okay, like the, the rules of the first race versus the rules, what we're doing now are definitely different. And I think, you know, op- being open to evolve as we go and realize, okay, so this competition caution idea, you know, that, yeah, we don't have to worry about green flag pit stops. Um, you know, if, if someone wrecks early, they can take the, you know, they get the lucky dog, they take the wave around, everybody pits. Yeah, it's just, that has made all the difference by by adding that. This se- or in, Yeah, it's uh, kept it competitive. Season through the midway point and then it's really bunched up to finishes i i want to say somebody was like a lap down and dead last in one of the early races this season and it's a recruiting race wasn't it no we well we had one it was i want to say it was brian mckinney oh i forgot brian yeah. Jeez. oh that's who i'm brian's forgetting. been a stud this season yeah too. yeah brian has been right there and honestly i don't think i've ever heard him speak a word on the radio <laughs> no you know who it was it was actually tyler in a recruiting race was it he got caught in a wreck ended up getting back onto a lead lap and then he, what either won or got second yeah, it's just it, it's given that opportunity that you are never out of the race. So, all right, I think it's time to wrap. You know, I don't know how long we've been doing this. We try to keep it shorter, but finale next week, Milwaukee Mile. Uh, we're gonna have a kind of an end of the year event for the drivers. We're not gonna broadcast it, but we'll we'll put the replay up on on YouTube so you can see what happened. We're gonna do some GT three testing, so we're excited about that. Uh, I started setting up the the session for that today. And I'm like, do these sprints do rolling or standing starts? But <laughs> and uh, it was rightfully pointed out. Oh man, if you tried to do a standing start, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it'd be laughs> uh, all right, we're throwing the car. We're gonna start over. Mulligan. <laughs> anyway, on college that note, night on yes, Wednesday. Yes, come check oh, it out. That's right, Milwaukee Mile, 10:15 p.m. Eastern time next week. And then that's going to do it for Wednesday Night Dash for 2022. Yeah, be back in 2023. We'll have some episodes and some various things that we're going to talk about. Yeah, but... Talk about wrap up stuff, you know, get a guest here and there. And, uh, yep, we'll do that. So at FR Racing Online, frracingonline.com. That's it. We'll Thanks see you for then. tuning in. We'll see you next week.